welcome back to the channel. Well today is Halloween and I've been over to the Haunted Hangar of all places to carry out the bore sighting and initial zero of my new Hick Micro Stellar Thermal Scope. Now we did this process earlier on on my Ticker 243 but for now the scope is now on my Lithgow 22LR as I've been out shooting some rabbits earlier on this evening for a customer. So let's go over now to the haunted hangar. Remember it's Halloween so you need to be brave and I'm just going to go through the process that I've done to bore sight and set up the initial zero before going out and doing some live shooting. We'll see you in the hangar. Hello and welcome to the haunted hangar. Uh, tonight I'm going to try to do a bore alignment on my 243 to set up the Hick Micro Stellar Thermal Sight. I've never tried this before so it's a completely new idea I, I thought of today at work. What I've done is 100 yards away from here is a white board that I've drilled a 13mm hole through and I've put a very bright torch behind that which is giving me light that I can see and also a heat source. So I've lined the rifle up through the bore at the light source and now all I've got to do is line up the reticle to an inch above it. So I want to aim this rifle an inch high at 100 yards. I'll take you down the other end and you can see what I've done there. Well we're down the bottom end now, we're just over 100 yards away as you can see. It's just a plain white board and in the centre of it is a 13mm hole and I've put the heat source about an inch below that hole. So I'm actually aiming the thermal at the heat source and I've just put the crosshairs an inch high above it. So it's not going to be too far uh, off of there. So uh, I say it's just an idea I've had today, a, a way of uh, bore sighting in the dark safely. Um, it will need bore sighting again during daylight and then followed by a couple of shots. So um, it's just a, a an idea I came up with that I thought it's got to be worth a try and if it works you'll know all about it. So this is the view uh, from my phone looking down the barrel and uh, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel so to speak. Now I've never tried this before so I'm just going to give this a go uh, and just see if it's a different way of setting up a thermal scope um, initially without taking the first shot. Well, I'm doing the voiceover because the audio on the Stella is pretty horrific and uh, I have paid for this scope so I didn't feel um, that I was doing the wrong thing by uh, emailing and letting the, the uh, suppliers know. Uh, they are aware of it and it will be sorted out because the microphone on the new Falcon is absolutely brilliant. So it's a work in progress for a new piece of kit. So all I'm doing here, I'm laying behind the rifle, looking down the bore and looking up through the scope so it's a bit jiggly you can't obviously get it nice and still but uh, we got there in the end and I got pretty close so we'll go over to a still image now uh, that I shot the next morning uh, and I was quite happy with the very first shot you can see where my finger is so I was a half an inch low and half an inch over to the left so really pleased with that first shot and I could have probably carried on and leaving it like that Right, so this is my last shot now. I've got it virtually where I want it. I've just gone two clicks over to the left, so the equivalent of half an inch at 100 yards, and three clicks down, so three quarters of an inch down. Ideally, I want to be aiming there in the centre, but actually point of impact, about an inch off the centre. So, so this is the last shot of five. I've got some close. I just want to make sure we're somewhere now you can see what I mean about the audio coming off the Stella. Um, quite horrific. Well, I've just moved forward now to where the target is. If you can look on top of the bank there, there's a wind indicator there that the farmer's put out and it is now at 90 degrees, wind coming from the left. So I've taken five shots on this target and the first shot was there. So that went bad for a bore sight. The second shot I'd over overcompensated was over there. Third shot is just there underneath that seal. I've put this seal of tape so I can see the line of the shot 
um, with the thermal so that's why that's there's marking that hole that one's actually marking the hole so that was a mirror image of that shot uh, I then adjusted a bit more I'm trying to get an inch high so that was my fourth shot fifth shot is there now bearing in mind we've got quite a breeze now so I'm tending to uh, thinking on leaving that there now uh, compensate for that breeze okay it's not an inch high it's about a quarter of an inch high but um, we'll, we'll stick with that and see how we get on this evening Well, I'm all packed up, ready to go. I'm on my way over now to meet up with Robin for hopefully uh, a session on the foxes and maybe even a bit of rat shooting. So I've got just over two hours driving to do due east. If I go any further, I'm going to end up in the North Sea. So I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you and meeting Robin later on. Point of interest on the way. Exit the roundabout onto Dunford Road. A bit of racing going on, from what I can hear. In a quarter of a mile. Well, I've got about 26 miles to go, and already the topography of the ground has changed quite drastically to what I've been used to. The fields now are probably getting on for about three quarters of a mile across. There's no hedgerows between each field. It just seems to be a series of drainage ditches and dikes. Um, quite a, a usual thing that I've seen on any of Robin's films. Uh, and it's quite apparent now how he's able to see foxes from seven, 800 yards away, uh, making their way towards the call. So uh, hopefully I'm gonna be on bended knee and pray that the weather stays as it is at the moment, but you can never tell in this country, especially this late in the year. So uh, we'll see you later on. I don't know, he's uh, get on the wrong side of that, would you? Well, that's the fox number two that I shot that evening uh, and I've, I could not find the record button to save my life with gloves on. So Robin very kindly offered to go out and get it. We had to tell him left, right, forward a bit, back a bit. Uh, it's difficult to find foxes in that stubble. Uh, so what did I come up with as a way to find the record button on the scope? Easy fix. I went to the local hardware store and got some rubber bump stops for the kitchen doors. Uh, this is what they look like, just glued one on with some black silicon glue, uh, problem solved. So if you've got the same sort of scope and you have trouble finding the buttons, there you go. Thanks to Dwayne for driving all that distance, uh, taking Robin and I around. He was absolutely valiant and intent on getting uh, some foxes for us. I got back the next morning and my uh, colleague from the shooting club, Sam, sent me a, some video from his bathroom window of a fox on his garage roof. He said, why do you need to travel all that way when they're in my garden? There we go, that's foxes for you. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I might have got me ups and downs and me lefts and rights mixed up with zero in the scope, but I got there in the end in five shots and at £1.90 a shot, that's not bad going. My little motto there, sit still, be quiet, and above all, shoot safely. If you're new to the channel, please click on the subscribe button and notification bell. It'd be great to have you along for the next time. A big thank you to Robin again, and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio!